this is the third video in a series of three videos where I'm discussing PhD life before, during and after. The link for the first two videos can be found in the description. In the first video, I discussed the application process. In the second video, I discussed what happens in a PhD program, how the PhD programs are structured. And in the third video, I will discuss post PhD life. <laughs> This is Chaitanya Sambhara, faculty at the College of Business, University of Texas Arlington. I'm recording this video at this location because people were asking why I don't have Indian flag. I hope you can see the Indian flag right there. Okay. I have a whole bunch of questions that were asked. Answering many of these questions is quite challenging because most of these questions have very subjective answers. It really depends from case to case. And that was the topic of my very first video on this YouTube channel. If you have not watched that video, I would recommend that you click on the link above so that you can watch the entire video. In that video, I discussed all the possibilities for your career once you finish your PhD. I have already made a video answering this question as well. In fact, I discussed what is EB1 green card process like. And apart from this, I discussed a variety of other methods to get a green card. Now, Green card is very subjective again. First of all, in EB1 category, you're recognized on the basis of your achievements in academic and scientific setting. Based on those achievements, you can actually file for EB1 green card. Link for that video is right above here. See, there are occasions where these two kind of careers actually completely overlap. But in most cases, however, the careers are very different. MBA is a managerial role, whereas PhD is designed to make you a researcher, which is a research oriented role. You're expected to do research in whichever setting you are in. That said, there are many PhDs who actually end up taking managerial roles rather than research oriented roles. But the two careers usually are very different from one another. So one major difference between a professor in a university versus a research in a lab is that in a research lab you are not expected to teach. As a professor, teaching is one of your responsibilities. That said, being a professor in a university setting gives you a lot of freedom. You can pursue whichever kind of project you want to pursue. You can even choose what project to work on on what day. In a lab, however, when you are working on a group project, you need to go along with whatever the goals are or whatever the objectives are for your division or for your unit and then you work on those kind of projects. For example, your lab could be asked to make a vaccine on Ebola, let's say. Now, you have to work on Ebola vaccine the whole time. Whereas if you are a professor, you can actually choose what interests you and what you want to pursue. Another key difference between the two roles is that as a professor, you are also expected to guide PhD students. Although it is not necessary, but for most part, at some point in your career, you will likely guide PhD students who will get a PhD under you. In a lab setting, you do not necessarily have doctoral students to train. But there is one common link between the two when you can do postdoc either at a university setting or in a lab setting. Postdocs are more or less similar in both the settings. If you are interested in research but not in teaching, you need to find a position where it is heavily research oriented. Either you can become a faculty at a university which is highly regarded for their research and you are a productive researcher so that your teaching responsibilities are minimized. However, if you do not want to teach at all, you should not go into academia. You should rather work in a lab or in a company in a research setting if possible. So is PhD still a good option for you? Yeah, sure. but you should try and not get into an academic setting because you will not be able to avoid your teaching responsibilities altogether. So what usually happens is that the higher is the rank of your university, the likelihood of that university having a good PhD program is also higher. Although this is not always necessarily the case. But one yardstick that you can use is that the professors in that particular department, in that particular university, how many of them and to what extent do they publish in top journals in that academic area? If you see that university department is publishing in undisputed top journals, that means that it must have a really good PhD program and your likelihood 
of being recognized for graduating from that particular department and that university is very high and you can get a good placement. This question is so important that it will take an entire video on its own. I cannot be sure about other fields, but I can surely share my personal journey on how I became a professor in a university setting after finishing my PhD. When it comes to Ivy League colleges, they usually take PhD graduates from other Ivy League colleges. In many occasions, they actually even absorb their own students. So now to answer your question, how to become a professor in an Ivy League college, you need to go to an Ivy League college first and then do good research, publish in top journals, and it is likely that some good Ivy League college will take you as an assistant professor. See, this is a very difficult question to answer. It is just like asking, what is the salary you can get in Bangalore after finishing your bachelor's? See, there are so many factors in that question. What college did you graduate from? What kind of job you got? What kind of position you got? But if you really want to know the answer, my rough estimate would be a range between $65,000 to $350,000. For the time being, let's leave industry aside. In industry, your salaries after PhD might not be that high, but it could be slightly higher than a master's student salaries. But in academia, the range could be anywhere between $65,000 to all the way to $350,000. Why do I say 350K? If you have a PhD in accounting or finance, and if you are from a top school, and then you get a job as an assistant professor in a top university again, the likelihood of you starting at a very high salary is also high. In the field of information systems, the highest starting salary right after PhD program that I have seen has been $190,000. But this is the salary that I have come to know about. It is possible that some other people got even higher salary, but I don't know about that. Now one should remember, this is just the base salary. You also get summer stipend, and when summer stipend is added to your salary, your salary could be anywhere between 220 to 250K on the higher end, and on the lower end, your salary would be in information systems, anywhere between 100,000 to 150K. Thank you for watching. Jai Hind and God bless the United States of America.